Hey everyone, I'm professional photographer Ian Plant, and in this video, I'm gonna talk about the five critical accessories for landscape photography that I never leave home without. These are always in my camera bag whenever I head out in the field to make landscape photos. So if you wanna learn more, then stay tuned. All right, so today I'm gonna to talk about the five critical landscape accessories that I always have in my camera bag. These are the five accessories that I never leave home without. They're the most important parts of my landscape photography workflow. And the great thing about landscape photography is that you don't really need a lot of equipment. So typically I'm heading out with my camera, uh, maybe a lens or two. Usually I've got a wide angle zoom with me and I've got my tripod and a few other accessories and that's it. So I try to keep my camera bag as light as possible when I'm doing landscape photography because a lot of times I'm out there hiking around in the wilderness and so I don't want to be bogged down by a lot of equipment. And of course, everyone knows that I really enjoy doing ultra wide angle landscape photography. So typically I'm out there with just one lens, maybe a second lens, just in case I want to zoom in a little bit tighter. But overall, I keep my landscape kit as pared down to the bare essentials as much as I can. So the first critical landscape accessory that I always have with me, of course, is my tripod. And it's not just any type of tripod. I think it's a really good idea if you're doing landscape photography to invest a little bit extra and buy a carbon fiber tripod because those are gonna be lighter in weight and so they'll be much easier to carry around. And this particular tripod that I've got right now is made by PhotoPro. PhotoPro is a company that I work with a lot. They sponsor me but I absolutely love their tripods. I think they make really well-engineered tripods. They're very stable, very sturdy support. And so I use PhotoPro tripods all the time. And this particular one is their X Aircross 2 carbon fiber travel tripod. And this is super light. This has gotta be one of the lightest tripods I've ever used. It comes in at only two pounds. And so you can barely feel it when you're walking around. You barely notice that it's there but it extends up to a good height, like about chest level. And if you extend the center column, it'll go up to eye level. And it's actually very sturdy. So it's not something I would use if I am working in, let's say high winds, if I got really high gusty winds, this tripod isn't really ideal. I'll get out a heavier tripod for something like that. Or if I'm working in moving water, like if I'm shooting waterfalls and streams or in heavy surf at the coast, this isn't gonna be my first choice, but for pretty much everything else, this is my go-to tripod. I absolutely love this tripod. It's perfect for most of my landscape photography, especially when I'm out there hiking in the wilderness and I really need to keep my weight down as low as possible. So when you're investing in a tripod, you should look for a tripod that easily allows you to get down to pretty much ground level with your tripod. And that's what I like about this PhotoPro X Aircross 2 tripod is that there is a center column when you need that extra height, but it comes out easily. You can just unscrew it. And once you've got that center column unscrewed, and here we go, I can just set that aside and then I can lower the legs to the basically the lowest position that the click stops will let you go. And that gets me down very low. It gets me down almost to ground level. So with the camera on the tripod ball head, um, I'm probably about, I don't know, five or six inches above the ground. You don't really want to get any lower than that with your tripod. You don't really actually want to get down to ground level for landscape shooting because at that point your lens is going to be so close to the ground that the ground is going to be within the minimum focus distance of the lens. And so it's going to be really hard to keep that part of the scene in focus. But getting down as low as possible, getting down so that the camera is maybe five or six inches above the ground, you're not always going to be getting this low, but you do want that option for certain types of shots. Like if I'm getting low to photograph crack mud or something something like that, something that's really small and requires me to get down to that ground level, having a small lightweight carbon fiber tripod that will do that is really gonna expand your shooting options. Okay, so the next accessory is an L bracket. And I find an L bracket to be really critical for my landscape work. And it's a simple piece of metal. And basically what the L bracket does is it attaches to your camera and it's designed to let you very easily switch between vertical and horizontal orientation when you're making photos. So if you don't have an L bracket, if you've just got a quick release attachment, if you're shooting horizontal and you wanna switch over to vertical, you've gotta flop that tripod ball head over. And this can be very difficult 
you can see here that with my low level tripod setup, actually flipping over to vertical, the legs can get in the way. It can be really difficult to get in that position. And when you've got the ball head flopped down like that, you don't have the camera over the center of gravity of the tripod. So the L bracket allows you to have a more stable and optimum shooting position, regardless of whether you're shooting horizontal or vertical, and it's really easy to switch between the two. Now, these L brackets can get a little pricey. Sometimes they might be only 60 or 70 bucks. I've seen some that are over 100 or $150, and people ask me all the time, why would I spend 150 bucks for a folded piece of metal. Uh, I don't blame you. I think that that's a pretty good observation, but you'll find that this makes your setup much more stable and it'll make your shooting experience much easier when you're in the field. Being able to easily switch between horizontal and vertical and vice versa is critical when you're moving fast, when you're working in fleeting light. And so I find the L bracket to be well worth the money. Part of the reason why these L brackets are as expensive as they are is that they're custom made for each camera model. So there's not really a one size fits all L bracket. So make sure when you're buying an L bracket to buy one that fits your specific camera model. Otherwise, it's not gonna be quite right. And that perfect fit is gonna allow you to have access to all your buttons and controls and all the different panels on your camera. So make sure you get the right one and you'll find that it makes your landscape photography a lot easier. So next up is a remote trigger. It's an electronic trigger. You plug this into your camera and you can use this to trigger the camera shutter. And this is really critical because when you're out there taking photos and you reach up and you hit the shutter button, you're introducing vibration into the camera. And especially if you're doing a somewhat long exposure, that vibration can reduce your image quality, can make everything shaky and blurry. So the remote trigger is designed to prevent that physical vibration being introduced. A lot of times when I'm out in the field, I forget my remote trigger and I'll just use the camera's two second timer, but you can't really use that when timing is critical. So if you're working, for example, on the coast and you're trying to time the shot for that perfect incoming wave, you definitely need to have one of these remote triggers. The two second timer just isn't gonna do it for you. So my next critical accessory is a filter, specifically a polarizer filter. I actually don't use filters all that much in my landscape photography anymore. I used to use graduated neutral density filters which are designed to balance the exposure between the sky and the land at sunrise and sunset. But now I typically just do exposure blending like a merge to HDR in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw. It's really easy to do that sort of thing. And I also really don't use neutral density filters that often, though they can be useful for landscape photography when you need to lengthen your exposures. But one filter that I can't live without is a polarizer filter. And a polarizer is designed to remove or enhance reflections that may be in a scene. So an example of reflections you might wanna get rid of if you're photographing waterfalls or streams, there's gonna be a lot of wet rocks and on those wet surfaces, you're gonna see a lot of glare and also you're gonna see glare in the water itself. And so removing that glare with a polarizer will improve color and contrast in the scene. Polarizers are really great also when you wanna enhance reflections. So for example, if you're photographing a rainbow, the rainbow's not really a reflection, it's a refraction which is kind of a reflection in the sky, but it's the same principle. If you spin the polarizer around, you'll make the rainbow disappear, but if you keep on spinning, you'll reach a point where the rainbow will just seem to pop out from its surroundings. So it's kind of a secret weapon when you're photographing rainbows or maybe you're photographing reflections of autumn foliage in a stream with a long lens. The polarizer, you can spin it around and see how it affects the reflections. As you spin it, those reflections might go away, keep on spinning, and those reflections will be revealed even stronger. So definitely if you wanna remove or enhance reflections in your landscape photos, a polarizer is a critical accessory to have. One type of scene where you really don't wanna use a polarizer, a lot of people say that you should use a polarizer to darken a blue sky, but you gotta be careful about that, especially if you're working with a wide angle lens because you can get uneven polarization of the sky. So I tend not to use it for scenes like that. I really only use it for the most part for waterfalls and for streams and whenever I see a rainbow pop out. That's when I reach for the polarizer and it becomes a critical accessory. The final critical accessory is a bit of a surprise, I think, and that is my smartphone. And so a smartphone is a great accessory for landscape photography because you can have all sorts of apps that will help your photography. So for example, having GPS so you don't get lost when you're out there exploring the wilderness or a weather app so you can check the weather to make sure that you're out there at sunrise and sunset when the clouds are gonna be their best. 
Or you can have a photo planning app like Photo Pills or the Photographer's Ephemeris, which is the app that I use. And these apps allow you to plan where the sun is gonna be rising and setting in a particular area. And these are all extremely useful, but I actually use my smartphone in a much more direct way with my landscape photography. I use the camera on the phone to help scout my landscape compositions. And most of the smartphones today have got a wide angle option. So I can actually zoom out to the widest focal length on my phone, which is about the equivalent of 12 millimeters on a full frame camera. And I could just put the phone in front of me and I can actually look at my compositions in real time and I can move the phone around and I can find the perfect spot and the perfect focal length, the perfect height for setting up my camera on my tripod. So with my phone, I can quickly run around and scout the landscape and find the optimal positions and the very best compositions before I even set up any of my equipment. So it saves me a lot of time and it makes me much more efficient when I'm in the field. All right, so those are my top five accessories for landscape photography. I think if you've got these five accessories with you at all times, you're gonna be more effective and efficient when you're in the field, and that's gonna help you make better landscape photos. Hope you found this video helpful. I'm Ian Plant, and I'll see you next time.